Hey legends, and welcome back to Fantasy Wannabes. We are continuing our best of the best series, and today we are up to the Dragons. Now the Dragons are not the same team they used to be, and in fact they are still going through a degree of transition. A transition that I'm sure most of you would agree isn't looking that fantastic at this point in time. They've had some drama particularly around the whole Volkman issue. I mean, that's really been pretty atrocious on all sides there. And I've got to say, from my point of view, that really doesn't give us a whole heap of options, either at the high end in terms of big point scorers for the Dragons, or too much that's really exciting in terms of emerging talent that's really going to drive significant value and make us a lot of cash. Now, with that in mind, let's get into it. All right, so look, these are my top four. And these are the guys that I think can deliver a relatively decent result in 2024. So I'm going to start with Jacob Little. And you're probably looking at that average of 39 there and going, well, that's not that's not really exciting. Um, but I think he, now that Volkman is out of the way, has the potential to be, you know, near on an 80-minute hooker. And uh, if he's playing 80 minutes, then I would expect him to deliver a higher average than 39. He's only available at hook. He is a little bit of a punt because we don't exactly know what that hooker rotation is going to look like. Look, he will make money if he can achieve a consistent 80 minutes. I don't think it's going to be huge though. I think he'll push somewhere around the high 40s, maybe even towards that 50 mark. So he could represent a little bit of value there as well. Now the next guy on our list is Ben Hunt. And as a Queenslander, I absolutely love this guy. But given he doesn't want to be at the Dragons, I'm not sure I can recommend him to be in anyone's fantasy team either. Now, I think he'll do a solid job. He will be consistent. He obviously does the um, the in-play kicks. But I think that's about it. You know, I think we'll get the odd try. He's obviously going to set up a few try assists. And I think he'll be relatively consistent at that price point. I don't think he's going to grow significantly in value. And I think for the majority of the season, and he's going to hover around that 50 point mark which you know if you're looking for that second tier halfback he could be an option but obviously he's going to play origin and I think unless you really really want him there's probably a few better options like I said though as a Queenslander I think he's a bit of a legend and as a Broncos fan I was definitely sorry to see him go all right next up is one bloke that is absolutely fantasy relevant he is worth every single cent of his price point and that's the big man Jack DeBell now he is the best player on the team bar none he plays hard he delivers great results and I think he will continue to average around that 60 mark. The question from my point of view is, will they need him as much this year as they did in 2023? Or does that extra support coming in off the bench mean that Jack DeBellin's minutes are trimmed down a little bit? And as a consequence of that, will he be able to maintain that near on 60 point average and maintain that near on 800,000 K price point? I don't know. Look, I'm very tempted by Jack DeBellin. If I can squeeze him in, I absolutely will. I'm not sure. I can get him for round one but he was a big part of my team in 2023 and if I can squeeze him in I'll find a, uh, a way to do it and you know what you can't go wrong if you put a Jack DeBellin in your team he is going to consistently deliver I think it's just in his DNA he doesn't really know any other way to play than hard fast and straight and I think he'll be a pretty good pickup now finally in terms of this particular list I've got Zach Lomax now at center it's a definite no from me. But if he does end up getting the fullback spot, and I don't actually think he will, but there is rumors and a little bit of talk, whether it's him or Sloan. I honestly think they'll go with Sloan or at least start the season with Sloan and see how he goes. You never know. Sloan may not end up delivering and they could push Zach Lomax into that position. But I don't think that's going to be the way it goes from round one. And look, if he does achieve that fullback spot, then you know what? He could be a superstar if you position a fullback who's perform really well with that dual center wing fullback positioning you could slot him in your centers and happy days I think you know he will improve that 43 average and his money making potential will also go up but like I said we want him playing wing fullback for the Dragons before we bring him into our teams in that center spot so there you go look that's the um the big points guys in terms of what I think the Dragons are likely to deliver in 2024 all right, so next up, we've got a couple of guys that I think are probably the best opportunity to make some money out of the Dragons in 2024. 
We've got the coach's son there, Kyle Flanagan, coming in at 349k, 25.4 average and available in the halves. Now, obviously, he is going to accompany Ben Hunt. And now that Volkman is out of the way, I think there's no one really there to challenge him for that 80 minutes. And if you can get an 80 minute 5 8 coming in at 349k, look, I think he could average upwards of maybe 45 uh, on a good day, probably pushing into the 50s, depending on what sort of role he ends up playing. And if he ends up also kicking goals then um you never you never know he could you know push well past that 50 mark if the um the dragons have a great day so i'm very tempted by kyle flanagan and i think he may just end up finding his way into my team as kind of that uh that third string backup half i don't know if he'd make the 17 at this stage i really want to see more of him but i think this guy could make us some serious coin He's the coach's son, so I think, you know, the coach is going to give him every single opportunity to prove himself, to deliver some value, and look, fingers crossed, he performs really well at the Dragons. Now, the other guy there is Tom Eisenhuth, coming in at 524k, 30.8 average, and available to us on the edge. Now, there's a lot of decent value on the edge this season, but uh, it really comes down to what sort of role Tom Eisenhuth is going to pick up at the Dragons, and if he can play big minutes, and that's what it all comes down to, really. If these players can play big minutes in 2024, then they're going to make us some cash. You know, whether that's a Josh Curran or a Viliami Kikau, I think, you know, if they're playing big minutes and performing really well, They'll take their current price and they will skyrocket. And we just need to sort of navigate through which ones of those are more likely to deliver us those consistent points in 2024. So there's kind of two options that I think could deliver us some money. And it'll be interesting to see how these trials and the first couple of weeks really pan out. But the Dragons have a relatively decent buy schedule. And I think, you know, a couple of these guys really might be worthwhile considering getting in our team. So, you know, Jack DeBellin is almost a must have at some stage. Jacob Little, if he's playing 80 minutes or near on 80 minutes, could represent some seriously good value in that hooker position. Zach Lomax, if he's playing fullback and continuing to kick goals, could be worthwhile as well. Kyle Flanagan, be very interesting to see how he performs next to Ben Hunt and whether Ben Hunt continues to dominate that halves pairing or things get shared around a little bit more. And you know, what happens to the to the goal kicking? We know Zach Lomax hasn't necessarily been kicking them all that sweetly. So is Kyle Flanagan somebody who could come in and really improve that goal kicking percentage at the Dragons? And finally, Tom Eisenhuth playing on the edge. What sort of minutes is he going to get? And will he deliver us some absolute value in 2024? So there you go, guys. Look, that's the video today. A relatively short one for the Dragons. There's not the plethora of options whether it's value, performance, or growth. I think the Dragons continue to be in that rebuilding phase. Unfortunately, if you're a Dragons fan, I can't see them making the top eight this year. I think there's just too much work for them to do. But you never know. Look, if things click, then they just might actually surprise a few of the higher performing teams. Now, look, as always, if I've missed any players or you think somebody deserves to be mentioned, put it in the comment section down below. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, guys, I'll see you all in the next video.